Item Number SCP-1050 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-1050-1 is to be maintained in a storage facility with interior dimensions of at least 5 meters by 5 meters by 32 meters. The ceiling of the storage facility, specifically the area directly above SCP-1050-1, must be shielded to block radio wave broadcast at an intensity of See Addendum 2 SCP-1050-1 is currently stored at Area 179. Occurrences of SCP-1050-2 are to be located upon identification of the corresponding change in SCP-1050-1. These are to be located and confiscated by Foundation agents. SCP-1050-2 is to be stored in secured classified document storage. Instances of SCP-1050-3 must be tracked by monitoring radio telescope telemetry. When an instance of SCP-1050-3 is detected by non-Foundation personnel, all records must be confiscated and or destroyed, and affected persons should be administered amnesiacs. SCP-1050 consists of one item SCP and two related phenomena SCP-1050-2 and SCP-1050-3. SCP-1050-1 was recovered from a secret German research facility in following the conclusion of the Second World War. SCP-1050-2A was recovered from Soviet NKVD archives in 1950 SCP-1050-2B was recovered from British Crown Archives in 1950 SCP-1050-1's previous origins are unknown. SCP-1050-1 SCP-1050-1 is a large obelisk made of solid obsidian, with approximate dimensions of 1.48 meters by 1.48 meters by 30.5 meters. These measurements correspond with the archaic length measure of the Roman pace, equal to 1.48 meters. Dr. Von Smith. According to obsidian hydration dating of the obelisk, the obelisk itself was carved approximately 48,009 years ago. Microscopic scans indicate that it is perfectly shaped at the molecular level, indicating creation requiring technology in advance of that available at the present. The obelisk is covered by a variety of writing scripts, all apparently containing the same message, and all apparently carved with the exact same precision as the obelisk itself. The surface of the obelisk appears to be subdivided into 80 1.48 m by 1.48 m sections, each with a distinct form of writing. Of the 80 sections, of them have been filled in. Images of several of the carvings on SCP-1050 are in Addendum 3. Linguistic analysis of the scripts indicate the following, in chronological order by age, except as noted. As yet unidentified scripts bearing no resemblance to any known language or writing style, past or present, with carving dates ranging from 48,000 years ago to years ago. These are presumed to contain the same message as the other scripts. A script of unknown origin, dating to the creation of the obelisk, whose spelling and grammatical structure resembles early forms of ancient Latin, though the alphabet and numeral system are completely different. Jahu Symbols SCP-1050-1 has provided the ability for linguists to read the previously indecipherable Yahoo symbols from ancient China, but the Foundation had not released any information related to the Yahoo symbols to the scholarly linguistic community due to the classified nature of SCP-1050-1. Akkadian Cuneiform Egyptian Hieroglyphs Linear A SCP-1050-1 has provided the ability for linguists to read the previously indecipherable Linear A from the ancient Minoan culture, but the Foundation had not released any information 
relating to Linear A to the scholarly linguistic community, due to the classified nature of SCP-1050-1. Olmec Script SCP-1050-1 has provided the ability for linguists to read the previously indecipherable Olmec Script from pre-Columbian Mesoamerica, but the Foundation has not released any information relating to Olmec Script to the scholarly linguistic community due to the classified nature of SCP-1050-1. Classical Latin, Early Medieval Swedish Runes Modern English, circa 1891 Modern Russian, circa 1943 The scripts all appear to contain the same message. The following is the English version of the message, as written on SCP-1050-1. Footnotes provide conjectural annotations by the research team. With the exception of a change in the ruler and date when the message was proclaimed again, the message appears to be identical in all languages on the obelisk. Beware the destroyers. They come by the millions from the realm of darkness, which extends where no stars shine. Conjectured to be interstellar space, possibly intergalactic space. For a thousand generations, they slumber, lying in wait. Great nations rise and flourish. There is peace and prosperity. Then comes the dark times. Then they return. They call and burn. They are warped and move beyond the pale, bigger than any man, unnatural births. Every nail, claw scale, and spur, every spike and welt on the hand of those heathen brutes is as barbed steel. It is said there is no honed iron hard enough to pierce them through, no time-proof blade that can cut their brutal blood cake claws. Preceding description, they are warped, claws, appears in Beowulf. Armies are raised and cut down like grasses before a sight. It is said the armies of Amora and Sodom, each ten thousand strong, were swept away between a single rising and setting sun. Archaic Tiberian Spelling of Sodom and Gomorrah Heroes come forth and are slaughtered. Lightning and fire rain from the sky, and the whole earth trembles. They are as a deluge, a powerful flood that washes away entire mighty nations and empires. Possible origin of the flood myths that appear across most ancient cultures. The people pray for deliverance from the gods. The gods fight the destroyers but their efforts are in vain. Iapetos Ancient Greek Titan, son of Uranus and Gaia, father of Atlas, Prometheus, Epimetheus, and Minotius, ancestor of the human race through Prometheus, Epimetheus, and Atlas, Titan of mortal life. He was imprisoned in Tartarus by the Olympians. Osir, archaic form of Osiris, ancient Egyptian god of the afterlife. Underworld, and the dead. He was killed by Seth and had his body torn into fourteen pieces, which were then scattered through the land. Ehecatl, pre Columbian Aztec wind deity, associated with Quetzalcoatl. Su Chang, deified ancient Chinese general, more commonly known today as Guan Yu. All perished. The destroyers are to the gods as the gods are to men, and men are to insects cold and vast and unsympathetic. The wise flee them, the lucky escape. Fifty score great vessels were launched to seek refuge from them. Fifty score great vessels were launched to seek refuge from them, only those led by Satyavat, initial name of the Hindu figure Manu, believed to be the first king to rule this earth, having saved mankind from the universal flood. Unaptishim Survivor of the Blood Myth in the Epic of Gilgamesh. Noah Archaic spelling of Noah, from the Abrahamic blood myth. Deucalion A son of Prometheus in Greek myth, he and his wife Pyra survived the Greek mythical blood by building a chest. Escaped The Dark Ones vanquished all before them. They have come before since before time began. Now they slumber. They will return. Beware the destroyers. 13-057-935-897 End in a Karen Extinction Event 
542 million years ago. 13057-9H7-212 13082937367 End Batomian Extinction Event 517 million years ago. 13082989898 Dresbachian Extinction Event 502 million years ago. 13 098-004-240-13-154-950-029 Ordovician Extinction Event 445 million years ago 13-154-997-841-13-171-943-486 Irrevocant Event 428 million years ago. 13 171 996 357 13 175 947 117 Mulda Event 424 million years ago. 13 175 997 684 13 179 942-287 Lao Event 420 million years ago 13 179-990-180 13-183-948-781 In Silurian Extinction Event 416 million years ago 13-183-999 048 13 232 952 474 Late Devonian Extinction Event 367 million years ago 13 233 001 388 13 281 951 481 Carboniferous Rainforest Collapse 318 million years ago. 13 282 002 364 13 329 941 108 Olsen's Extinction Event 270 million years ago. 13 329 990 159 13 348 945 350 Permian Triassic Extinction Event 251 million years ago 13 348 994 654 13 394 942 237 Triassic Jurassic Extinction Event 205 million years ago. 13 394 994 635 13 416 953 628 Toarshan Turnover 183 million years ago. 13 417 005 920 13 454-440-174 End Jurassic Extinction Event 145.5 million years ago 13 454-492-033 13-482-944-398 Aptian Extinction Event 117 million years ago 13 482 991 663 13 534 433 334 Cretaceous Tertiary Extinction Event 65.5 million years ago Dinosaurs go extinct 13 
5364-484-218-13-566-069-136 Eocene Oligocene Extinction Event 33.9 million years ago 13-566-119-136 13 585 446 914 Middle Miocene Disruption 14.5 million years ago 13 585 499 555 13 599 896 703 Quaternary Extinction Event Approximately 50,000 years ago 13 599 945 679 Possible date range Data expunged by O5 Command Proclaimed again by Her Majesty Victoria, by the grace of God, of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland Queen, Defender of the Faith, Empress of India, in the year of our Lord 1891. The end of the message is different for each time it is written varying by which ruler proclaimed again the message, and by altering the date accordingly. Testing has revealed the dates of the carving of different messages to correspond with the approximate dating provided by the different iterations of the message. So far, Foundation researchers have identified the following rulers. Legatus Maximus Romulus 53,005 BCE Original Carving Proto-Latin, with alternate alphabet. King Gilgamesh of Uruk, 2500 BCE, Akkadian cuneiform. Pharaoh Kakor Sunusret III of the Egyptian Middle Kingdom, 1800 BCE, Egyptian hieroglyphs. King Midas of Manoa, 8. BCE Linear A Caesar Publius Aelius Traianus Hadriani Augusti, Emperor Hadrian, of Rome, 122 CE, Classical Latin King Eric the Victorious of Sweden, 985 CE, Early Medieval Swedish Runes Queen Victoria of Great Britain, 1891 CE, Modern English Premier Joseph Stalin of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, 1943 CE, Modern Russian, Most Recent Carbon The meaning of the series of numbers appearing in the message is not known for certain. However, if assumed to be standard Earth years from the date of the Big Bang, then the numbers follow a pattern consistent, within four significant figures, with the major extinction events in the planet's history followed by a date roughly 50,000 years later. Extensive investigation of prehistoric extinction events has thus far failed to definitively confirm a connection between the events, but has similarly failed to disprove such a connection. SCP-1050-1 also admits SCP-1050-3 from its apex, despite apparently having a composition of solid obsidian. SCP-1050-2 SCP-1050-2 consists of documents with text equivalent to carvings on SCP-1050-1, apparently written by the rulers alleged by SCP-1050-1 to have proclaimed the message. The existence of SCP-1050-2 was discovered when the Russian message, apparently proclaimed by Stalin, mysteriously appeared on SCP-1050-1 overnight while the obelisk was in a Nazi research lab during the Second World War in 1943. SS researchers, discovering the mysteriously added new message, reported the development to their superiors, but no evidence for the origin of the new carving was ever determined by the Nazi research team. SCP-1050-2A, a version of the message written in Stalin's handwriting, was discovered after the war by Foundation operatives. It was located in the archives of the Soviet People's Ministry of Internal Affairs NKVD, though there is no clear indication whether Stalin ever actually wrote the message. 
SCP-1050-2B, a handwritten version of the message apparently written by Queen Victoria, was recovered from British archives in 1950 where it had apparently been filed without notice. Apart from the fact that both 2A and 2B match handwriting examples of the respective apparent authors and both seem to have appeared without explanation, no anomalous properties have ever been noted in SCP-1050-2. No further instances of SCP-1050-2 have been uncovered to date. SCP-1050-3 SCP-1050-3 consists of a series of radio messages uncovered at different times by radio telescopes on four continents and in orbit. These messages consist of the following. Cowie Key Destrunt 131 5200067324 Two-three-two-one-four-zero-one-three-two-six-seven-one-two-three-two-one-four-zero-one-three-three-zero-zero-two-three-five-seven-seven-four-one-three-three-zero-zero-two-five-two-zero-three-one-one-one-three-three-one
The numbers have been determined to be Base 8, Octal, representations of the 40 Base 10, decimal integers, in the obelisk message, preceded by another 60 integers following a similar pattern. It is hypothesized that these numbers may refer to additional events not documented in Earth's paleogeological history. The Proto-Latin message translates roughly to, Beware the Destroyers. SCP-1050-1 emits SCP-1050-3 from its apex. SCP-1050-3 has also been received from other directions in space, including These are received as occasional pulses of 1-3 repetitions of the SCP-1050-3 message, suggesting similar directional broadcasts to those emanating from SCP-1050-1 being transmitted from rotating planets orbiting other stars. Addendum 1 Speculations by the SCP-1050 Research Team 19 SCP-1050 appears to be parts of an interstellar early warning system of unknown origin. Before the invention of more modern forms of rapid communication, some societies would light bonfires at the top watchtowers, which would then be observed by the next watchtower which would then light its own bonfire and so on. By this method, a warning of an invading army could be passed along tens or hundreds of miles and hours, rather than days. It seems to the research team that SCP-1050 may be something similar, which would explain the signal we've designated SCP-1050-3. Similarly, by having the message written on the obelisk in dozens of languages, and apparently proclaimed by major political rulers of the time, it would increase the likelihood of societies being forewarned about these destroyers, whomever or whatever they may be. SCP-1050-2 might be a means of spurring the governments of major political powers to action, though, due to the fact that this warning has not been visibly taken seriously or even publicly acknowledged, suggests that this has not occurred historically. While it may be attractive to assume such defensive measures as Hadrian's Wall or military buildups by the Nazis were due to preparing to meet some shadowy preternatural threat, no other historical evidence supports this conclusion. Addendum 2 Note on Containment Procedures Since the Foundation came into possession of SCP-1050-1 in 1940, O5 Command has twice amended the Special Containment Procedures initially requiring the blocking of radio signals 1940, then requiring that radio signals not be blocked 1960, then requiring that they be blocked 1980. These changes have resulted not from alterations in SCP-1050-1, but rather from changes in the perceived threat posed by SCP-1050-1's radio transmissions. The rationale behind blocking SCP-1050-1's broadcast of SCP-1050-3 is that it decreases the likelihood of drawing attention to Earth by removing this planet from the theorized early warning network. The rationale behind not blocking the signal is that, if the theories about the possibility of future extinction events being caused by the mentioned destroyers are correct, then this planet has some degree of obligation to warn other planets in danger. At present, 
the risks of broadcasting the signal are believed to outweigh the benefits. Addendum 3 Select images of carvings from SCP-1050 Zoomed in detail of original carving on SCP-1050-1. Text is written in a Proto-Latin language, with a previously undiscovered alphabet, dated to 53,005 BCE. Carving on SCP-1050-1 Text is written in unidentified script of unknown origin, dated to 24,000 BCE. Zoomed in detail of carving on SCP-1050-1. Text is written in unidentified script of unknown origin, dated to 24,000 BCE. Carving on SCP-1050-1. Text is written in unidentified script of unknown origin, dated to 13,000 BCE. Zoomed in detail of carving on SCP-1050-1. Text is written in unidentified script of unknown origin, dated to 13,000 BCE. Carving on SCP-1050-1 Text is written in unidentified script of unknown origin, dated to 9 BCE. Zoomed in detail of carving on SCP-1050-1. Text is written in unidentified script of unknown origin, dated to 9 BCE. Carving on SCP-1050-1 Text is written in Arcadian cuneiform, dated to 2005 BCE. Zoomed in detail of carving on SCP-1050-1 Text is written in Arcadian cuneiform, dated to 2005 BCE. Carving on SCP-1050-1 Text is written in Linear A, dated to 8 BCE. Zoomed in detail of carving on SCP-1050-1. Text is written in Linear A, dated to 8 BCE. Carving on SCP-1050-1. Text is written in Classical Latin, dated to 122 CE. Carving on SCP-1050-1. Text is written in unidentified Mesoamerican script, dated to 3 CE. Zoomed in detail of carving on SCP-1050-1. Text is written in unidentified Mesoamerican script, dated to 3 CE. Carving on SCP-1050-1. Text is written in unidentified Mesoamerican script, dated to 10 CE. Zoomed in detail of carving on SCP-1050-1. Text is written in unidentified Mesoamerican script, dated to 10 CE. Carving on SCP-1050-1. Text is written in Modern English, dated to 1891 CE.